Welcome back everybody, my name is Altamar, and we are going to be continuing our Let's Play of Wasteland 2. Where we left off last time, we had finished creating our characters and we're about to jump into the game, so let's do that right now. Uh, we are going to play on... Seasoned. I'm not going to play on a harder difficulty, I don't know how to play the game really. I've played Fallout and Wasteland 1, so I should be okay I would imagine, but... Just don't know yet. Alright. Cool loading screen. I like the, this dude the most. He's got an assault rifle and the sweet hat. Although she's kind of cool too. She's got like a gas masky thing on. Well, not really. It's sort of like a balaclava with goggles. And another assault rifle. That dude looks like a weird knight hybrid person. Anyways, there we go. The only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is that good men do nothing. General Vargas. What comes after the end? I don't know. Neither did they. They were just an army engineer battalion, constructing roads and bridges deep in the middle of the Arizona nowhere. They didn't know why Armageddon had come. They'd heard radio chatter about an attack on some space-based missile platform. But who had attacked it? Or why? No one knew. What they did know is that the politicians and the generals had finally ended the world. Now, everything was gone. They took over a federal prison for a fort, kicked out the convicts, got busy starting from scratch. Maybe it was an act of mercy. Maybe they figured that the prisoners would die out in the harsh new world. Whichever, it came back to bite the engineers in the ass. I would imagine so, yeah. Cultists, criminals, cannibals. They've been living with the fallout ever since. That dude's creepy looking. Good people had survived too, called for help in the night. And those engineers, those common soldiers, could not stand by and see them die. So they came out of their fort and they helped the survivors defend their homes. And for that, they earned a new name, a proud name, the Desert Rangers. Sweet. Now, Rangers, I know at times it seems our cause is hopeless. And I know it's hard to say goodbye to a brother in arms. But I want you to know something else. That no Ranger who dies in the line of duty will ever be forgotten. Nor will he have ever died in vain. Or unavenged. Cool. I'm not gonna lie, if I was ever in a post-apocalyptic situation, you, I would Mark. definitely try some long pig. AKA human. I'm sure it'd be delicious. A stiff, bearded older man wearing a hard-worn ranger uniform and a battered old cowboy hat, General Vargas walks with a cane, but he's not helpless. He wears a pearl-handled revolver on his hip, and there are a lot of notches on the barrel. Alright. I appreciate you coming to Captain Ace's retirement party when you hardly knew the man. Appropriate, too, seeing as how investigating his death will be your first duty as a desert ranger. Alright, then. 
How did Ace die, sir? Ace had been trying to locate a faint radio signal, which has lately been given us cause for concern. We gave him three repeater units and sent him to hook him up to three remote radio towers. This would have allowed us to get a fix on the signal. But sadly, Ace was murdered by unknown assailants right after hooking up the first tower. And his logbook and the last two repeater units were stolen. I'm going to ask him about the uh, repeater units. So, repeater units, sir. When you get back to the Citadel, talk to our radio expert, Wade Woodson, if you want to know more about the technical details. All I know is the repeaters will upgrade the towers and allow us to zero in on the mystery signal. Okay. Um, the signal is a threat, sir. The voice on those broadcasts disturbed me greatly. It talked crazy talk about a future where man and machine would be one. Worse, it talked about us, the Desert Rangers, specifically. It said it was coming for us. Well, that's not great. Um, how about the logbook? You think the logbook was stolen, sir? Don't know, but it wasn't on Ace's person when he was found. Look for it. It might have some clues as to his death. Okay. How about, uh, where are the radio towers? I'll give you the locations of the towers once you have the repeaters in hand. More important to find them first. Alright. I'm happy to be given the opportunity, sir, but are you sure we're ready? Yeah, I know. You've hardly found your feet with us, and here I am sending you on a mission that already got one ranger killed. Well, I wish I had another option, but the desert rangers are spread a little thin right now. Ranger teams Abel and Charlie are out west trying to stop a range war out there from becoming straight up genocide. And Team Baker is up north looking for a way through the radiation that's cut us off from Vegas. I'm afraid the next generation is going to have to lead the charge on this one. What's the mission, sir? The mission is this. Search the area where Ace's body was found and do your best to recover his logbook and the repeater units. Then call in your report. If you find the repeaters, I may send you on to finish his mission. Okay. Ace's death must be avenged, and it will be. But finding the signal he died trying to track down is just as important. Besides, I got the sneaking suspicion that when you find the one, you'll find the other. I'm actually going to ask, where is this area, sir? It's about a day's walk east from here. I'll mark it on your map. Thank you, that's all I need to know. Goodbye. So there's the radio tower, right up there. There you go. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We'll do our best. Good luck out there, recruits. Okay, we are now actually in the game. Let's right click to move. I wasn't expecting that. Can I zoom out? Oh, good. I can zoom out. I'm going to steal this shovel. Okay, I guess Zed shows you the things in the area we can examine. So let's go see what is around. This, uh,. Cross says, Supreme Jerk Pavlish. Cadet Suicide. Nice. Imperial Scar Scalp Ralph the Hobo. Awesome name. Cadet Fortison. Or Fortison, sorry. Cadet Paul Takeda. PFC David SF. SF. General Sergru. Major General Red Hawk. Cadet Serks. <laughs> Cadet Wolf and who else we got? PFC Bernard SF Lance Colin or Colonel Ken Stone Dr. Mike Scott I think that's it. Oh Technical Major Ron Nakita fought like a ranger until the end. Excellent. So keywords I can uh, manually enter them into a dialogue window. So like there are hidden keywords, okay. Good to know. And using items, I can assign them by right-clicking the item from the pop-up menu. Alright, let's try that. Right-click. Shovel. Can I dig up something here? Is that a thing? Can I do this on a grave? Because that would be kind of cool. No? Alright. Doesn't look like I can... Can I just do a whole area? No. Alright. Let's move on then. We have... Uh, a knife. Don't I have a gun? How do I switch guns? I have an empty gun. Can I reload? How do I do that? Oh, perfect. I can reload. 
All right, uh, switch weapons. She's got a rifle. Let's reload that bad boy. The phase blaster. Let's say right, that one's loaded. And uh, pump shotgun and a barbed wire bat. That's kind of grim. All right. So we have all of our weapons loaded up. It looks like that's a good good start to the game. What is this? That's a giant door. Can I rotate? Oh, I can. Look at that. Okay, cool. Um, so we can't go in yet. Let's go see if he has anything to say. A desert ranger in scarred but spotless combat armor stands at attention before the doors of the ranger citadel. He gives you a friendly salute. You notice that he is wearing a humongous double-barreled pistol on his hip. It's kind of awesome. What if I try and go in? Can I go talk to you? What do you have to say? Grenadier Major Nur Gibitz, Gibitz? Gibitz? Whatever. Welcome to Ranger Citadel recruits, but the general ordered me not to let you in before we finished your first investigation. Ordered, you say? I want to ask one. Oh, I need kiss ass level one required for that, so let us. Oh, no, I don't want to do that. Okay. Uh, we can say let us in, try and stop. Well, we could hard ass that. Let us in, ha, try and stop us. Talking tough already, huh? Well, it won't get you through this door, but I like your hutzpah. Still, you might want a little bite to back up that bark of yours. I'll tell you what, I got a little toy that might help. Interested? You bet, what is it? I call her Mississippi Mule, because she kicks like one. A double-barreled flintlock pistol that'll turn your enemies into thin red paste, as long as they're within 10 feet of you. She was my go-to gal when I was out on patrol, but now I'm stuck here on door duty. She doesn't get much use. You can have her, as long as you promise to put her to good use. I'm pretty sure that's a promise we can keep. Here we go, treat her good and she'll do the same for us. That being said, we don't have anyone that uses pistols, so that would be kind of cool if we had anyone that could use it. Oh, it's a shotgun. Oh, nice. We do have someone that can use it. We're going to give this to um, Galen, because I think it's better than his shotgun. Maybe. Uh, 10 to 14 damage versus 14 to 18, 51%, same hit chance, lower range, lower capacity, a larger cone angle, more penetration, and it gives us more damage per AP. Ah, oh, you know what, we'll give it a shot, why not? We have 10 shotgun shells, how bad could it possibly be? Is that loaded? Alright. I guess we're moving along then. Anything up here that I can loot? No. The uh, command squad of the Battlestar Galactica just wandering around. What's this do? Your canteens have been topped off. Oh, I guess we can uh, run out of water in this game. I didn't think about that. Where do I find that information? That could be important to know. Is there like a character sheet that tells me? That's experience. I don't know. I guess I'll look around for it more later, maybe? A kindly older woman in standard issue ranger garb. She seemed occupied counting goods and organizing crates. Aside from the clothes, she's the picture of a loving grandmother. You could swear she smells faintly of fresh baked cookies. Corporal Sovag Sofer Sefer says, Well, hello, recruits. Welcome to Solvig Sundries. Happy to trade whenever you like. An honor to make your acquaintance. Always nice to see new faces around here, and a pleasure to make sure they have everything they need before they head out into the big bad world. Nice to meet you too, Solvig. What's your story? Oh, it's not so interesting. I grew up in a village near here, but I was already a grandmother twice over when the desert rangers moved into the citadel. I saw how much good the rangers were doing, and I wasn't up to much with my children moved to other villages to start their own families. It was a little unconventional for an old lady to go through basic training, but I pulled my weight and earned my star. Interesting. I may not be too useful in forward operations, but I've got lots of experience keeping people well fed and well clothed, and I can run a drill press with the best of them. So General Vargas has me help um, Sergeant Melson run the supply, and I help Captain Mercaptain in the workshop now and then. Um, Ranger Citadel, what about it? I do love this place nowadays. It used to be full of some kooky birds back when I was younger. Fellows seemed to worship pre-war junk, even if they didn't know what it was, and they wouldn't share none of it. Well, I shouldn't get too judgmental. I'm sure they thought they were doing right. What is General Vargas like? 
he's a modern day Patton. He's got a mind for strategy and knows how to make the tough calls, but he's got a gentle side too. What is Sergeant Melson like? Oh, he's a great friend. A great quartermaster. We'd all be eating sand and wiping with cactus flowers without him. That would be extremely uncomfortable. What is Captain Mercaptain like? She's the smartest person I've ever met, bar none. She can whisk up, or whip up laser beams and water purification systems like I whip up pies. Sweet. So you can outfit us. Well, with essentials, as tough as to they find as they are, I can't just give them away for free. Believe me, I wish I could. But we keep our prices as close to cost as we can for our rangers. You can stop by for the basics whenever you're in the area, and once you get more clearance to enter the Citadel, you'll get access to some of our more valuable goodies. You'll have to talk to Sergeant Melson about that when you get inside. Um, I don't think we need, I don't think we have any money to start with. Let's see. We have zero dollars, so we really can't afford anything. Goodbye. We're Team Echo, apparently, according to her. Now let's rotate around. What do we go? Oops. Shoot, hit the wrong button. Alright, what is this? Let's examine that. Something seems to be buried here. Sweet! I have a shovel! I picked it up specifically for this reason, apparently. We found some scraps, some 12 gauge ammo, and a deck of cards. Um, we're gonna give this to Galen, because he's the only one that can use shotgun ammo. Scrap will keep on Adama for now, and the deck of cards he can keep as well. Alright, let's see, what do we have down here? What is that? The can... Our tin cans and goats usually go together. Your instincts are telling you that you might not want to steal this goat's next meal. But why? I'm gonna try. What are you gonna do about it? Oh, Jesus, it hit me. He headbutted me right in the butt. That's not, that's not cool. <laughs> uh, well, that kind of sucked. Something buried here. Let's see what else we can... Uh, loot in this place. There's also a woman named Angela Death here. Let's go talk to her after this. A glass eye, that's lovely, and some more scrap. Is scrap money in this game? I'm guessing that it is. Where does it show me our money amount? Oh, 69 bucks. So I guess scrap is money. You never should have put down the wrench and picked up the gun. Alright, what do you got to say? A tough-looking redhead with decades of sun and wind and hard living etched on her angular face stands sobbing in the shadows. You saw her at Ace's retirement party. The sleeves of her uniform have been torn off, revealing multiple tattoos on her sinewy arms, all skulls. The tears running down her cheeks are splashing on a rusty old wrench she holds in her scarred hands. She's not really standing in the shadows, she's standing in broad daylight, but regardless... Among the skull tattoos that cover Angela's arms, there is a single heart, and within that heart, a single name, Ace. Aw, oh, she lost her lover, boyfriend, person. That's sad. Sorry about the waterworks. I'm still pretty broke up over Ace. I'm Angie. You kids must be the new recruits old Vargas trained up. Lord, y'all just babies. I don't know, Adama looks pretty old, like, at least a couple decades older than Angela. But let's talk about Ace. We saw you at Ace's funeral. You knew him well? They all hurt, but this one, man... Ace wasn't even a ranger, not at first. He worked as a driver and a mechanic for Farron Brigo up in Vegas, and when base Cochis started sending its death machines into the desert, Brigo sent Ace off south to recruit robot fighters. We met machines in the de or sorry, we met him in Quartz. He'd pissed somebody off out there and they'd locked him up. We sorted that out, and, and he eventually started running with us, helping us fight Cochis. Cochis? And never stopped. Vargas eventually gave him the uniform and the hat, but I don't know, or, but I don't think he ever formally signed on. He was just always there, and now he's... he's... God damn it, Ace. I knew this one's trouble. I knew it. General Vargas. How well do you know him? Ha! Huh, better than he'd like. Back in the day, the general was the craziest of us all, but somehow after we brought down base coaches, he became the sanest. Now he's running the whole show and doing a fine job. While well, I'm still walking patrols and answering radio calls, shows you how much ambition I got, huh? Babies? Us? Sorry, but you are. As cute as little kittens, y'all remind me of us, Snake, Razor, Thrasher, and me, back when we were just starting out, thinking we were going to save the world for the future, thinking none of us would die. I... 
Christ, sorry, don't listen to me. Youth is good. Optimism is good. If we all started out worn, old, and jaded like me, no one would ever try to change the world. So you kids go ahead and give it a go. Maybe it'll work this time. I see you have Ace's name tattooed in that heart on your arm. You noticed that, huh? Well, Ace, I always said I wore my heart on my sleeve. Yeah, me and Ace, we are more than just old army buddies, if you know what I mean. That's why it hurts so bad. That's why I want to come with you. Okay. Where's Quartz? Man, not sure I recall. Haven't been out there in ages. Don't even know if it's still on the map. Ask Thrasher, he'd know. You thought Ace's mission was trouble? He was working on the same thing as Vargas was working on. Trying to track down radio signals from beyond the edges of the map. All seemed a bit boring and scientific to me. But then Ace started saying he thought something or someone was following him. I asked him to let me come with him when I met him at Rail Nomads. Just to give him the repeater units. But he told me to go back to base. He said it, he was just jumping to shadows because of those radio broadcasts that spooked him. I should have gone with him. Why didn't I go with him? What was base Cochise? An old military facility from before the war and the biggest fight the rangers ever had. There was some crazy computer in there that kept spitting out robots and sending them off to kill people. We had one hell of a fight putting it down. Earned our stripes that day. Literally, that's when I became Captain Death. That's an awesome name. So General Vargas used to be called Snake? Well, like I said, he was one wild ass son of a bitch back in the day. But I think the weight of his responsibilities has kind of squashed that out of him now. He hasn't been in a decent bar fight in, shit, a decade maybe? What happened to Hellraiser? He's another one gone. Went out for patrol a few weeks back and never came home. Don't know if he's dead or AWOL, or gone off to join the Scorpions. All anyone knows is he hasn't called in, and we haven't heard from anybody who's seen him. I miss old Hellraiser like blades. Didn't talk much, didn't make friends easy, wasn't big on the social graces, but he was loyal as they come, and when the shit started flying, he was the guy you wanted at your back. He didn't win that name by accident. Sharp as a razor, scary as hell. Where's Thrasher now? You better call him Gilbert now. Funny, back in the day, he seemed like this big old grouchy bear, strong as an ox and just about as articulate. But then he got all torn up during our fight with the robots from base Cochise, and he couldn't go on patrol no more. Any other commander would have handed him his walking papers, but Vargas doesn't dump old friends, so he started him working in the museum. Wouldn't you know it, turns out the old bear has a knack for cartography. He's been gradually mapping our little corner of the wasteland ever since. Who'd have thunk it? Tell me about the rail nomads. Could be a nice little place if the Atchisons and the Topekans would kiss and make up. Can't even remember what it's all about, but between them, they got enough old railroad tech that, if they worked together, they could give this area a real transportation system. Instead, seems like all they want to do is blow each other's heads off. Idiots. Know any more about these repeater units? I really don't know the details. It's all a bunch of mumbo jumbo about transmitters in one north south axis and signals bouncing off clouds. Ask Woodson about it. He's our radio genius. Have you heard any of these strange broadcasts? Ace played me some of them before he died. Hard to make out a lot of it, but what I heard made my hair stand out Ed. Some guy talking about turning men into machines, or machines into men or some shit. But the crazy thing was, when he starts talking about us, the rangers, saying we're the cause of all the trouble in the world and that we need to be wiped out so his glorious future can be born. I mean, who is this guy? Where is he? And what the fuck does he have against us? A computer was making the robots? Yeah, the base Cochise's AI. Don't know what was wrong with it. Broken, I guess. It thought everyone was its enemy, wanted to kill the whole planet. Who are the Red Scorpions? You were briefed on those fucks during your training? Well, let me fill you in. When we left the prison and moved here to the Citadel, well, the Scorpions were the jerks who moved into the prison when we moved out. Just a bunch of raiders back then, but they've been getting more organized, call themselves a militia now, and they try to act like they're the Desert Rangers of Eastern Arizona. Well, that's a load of horse shit. The protection racket ain't the same as protecting people. They shake down all the towns for money, and if the locals don't kick in, they smash them up. The rangers aren't like that. We get by on donations and good old fashioned scavenging. Do you know Sergeant Woodson? Radio technician Wade Woodson. Sure do. He's the guy that makes sure you can hear Vargas when you're on patrol. Keeps all the machines running and signal clear. He'll also talk your ear off about circuits and frequencies, and I don't know what else if you let him, but be nice to him. He's your lifeline to the base. What can you tell us about Eastern Arizona? <coughs> Excuse me. Basically everything between the prison and the radiation clouds to the east. 
There are a few small towns and farms out there, which the Scorpions claims is their territory. Rangers used to patrol that area before we moved here, and we knew it pretty well. But a lot can change in 15 years. Who knows, maybe it's all as clean and nice and crime-free as the Scorpions say it is, but I got my doubts. Radiation clouds. The edges of the map, kitties. Big hot areas we can't go into without getting cooked to a crisp. The clouds move around some with wind and weather, but there are permanent hot spots on every side of us, north, south, east, and west, until we started hearing these weird broadcasts. I kind of thought those clouds went on forever and that Arizona was the last place on Earth, but maybe there's more people out there. Huh. <laughs> Maybe the whole world's just fine and we're the only ones in hell. Wouldn't that be a joke? Okay, goodbye, Angela. Say, listen. Vargas asked you to look into Ace's death because he thought I was too upset to be professional about it. He didn't want me going off half-cocked and shooting up all of Arizona looking for his killer. But I gotta find this guy. Ace and me, well, we've been fighting side by side for nigh on 20 years. I'm not letting him die unavenged. Okay. So, well... I know it's going against orders, but if you let me tag along and be in at the kill, well, I'll help you find your feet out there. Maybe give you a few pointers along the way. I may be old and slow, but I know the waist's like the back of my hand. What do you say? We say yes. Alright. Cool. So. No need to tell Vargas why I joined you. If anybody asks, I'm just helping you get oriented, alright? Wow, she's a lot of hit points. Can I change my party group? Like, order? Inventory screen, maybe? No. P? No. Uh, what are all these buttons? Character screen, maybe that's where I can move people around. Nope. Uh, logbook, party... Right click, move? Nope. Middle button, move? No. Alright, well, we're at about half an hour, so I'm going to end the video here. Uh, so we have a new group member. I'm going to see if I can figure out how to move people around in order. If I can't, then, oh well, not a big deal, I guess. Um, this has been Eltamar. If you guys have any suggestions or comments, please leave them below. Otherwise, I will see you guys in the next video, and we'll be continuing our adventures through the wasteland.